Hey, Eric plays bass. Doing the thing in my name for a little bit, maybe. I'm going to do uh, on live on stream, twitch.tv slash Eric plays bass, a uh, intro to my new uh, short scale bass that I picked up. This is the Sire Marcus Miller uh, U5, I believe. Yeah, U5 short scale PJ type thing. And uh, this is my first time messing with it. I I bought it from from a dude off of uh, Talkbase actually, and uh, played it in the parking lot. You know, just grabbed the strap. Just I was like, yeah, that feels good, and paid the guy the money. And it's been on my wall since. I haven't really had much of a chance to uh, plug it in, and play it. So this is my first time plugging it into my rig and. Uh, dialing it in and everything checking it out um so this is like a first impressions thing of sorts for both uh those that might be watching this on youtube and those in my stream who may uh pop in and hear here and here out so uh first things first uh how's it feel uh pretty pretty good for the money i mean these are 534 brand new something like that 500 ish bucks uh you know, dive, not really. Some people, I've, I've seen it talk like some neck dive. It definitely doesn't, you know, I like bases ergonomically that go like this. This goes like this, even with a heavy strap, heavy padded strap, you know. So it's it's not dive dive, though. It's not, you know, it's not your EBOs. It's not your Gibson, you know, style bases or anything like that. It's not super headstock heavy. I might try, if I hang on to this thing, because, you know, knowing me, I tend to have a revolving door with gear i might swap out the tuning machines for some lighter weights like some hipshot ultralights or some of the goto ultralights which i haven't had a chance to try out but from my understanding uh low end lobster another great creator you should follow her um she mentioned how you can have uh in her review of this a uh, while back how you can have um goto direct replacements these are like vintage style machines which <sighs> Are we done with vintage style anything yet? Clearly not, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm the I'm the wrong person to talk to about vintage voice thing. I, I I like leaving vintage in vintage land. I like progressing forward, not going back. <laughs> Take the good old ideas and put them to the new stuff. That's what I'm all about. So, and this is kind of that overall. I mean, aside from the tuning machines, aside from the balance being a little off. Um, it's a little heavier than I expected. It's about eight pounds, three ounces, which is not heavy, you know, relative to, I guess, uh, normal bases, but I like lightweight bases. My last base, which I really liked quite a bit was the Reverend Want Plower. Um, that was like under seven pounds. So if anything, that was almost a little too light for me. I, I like a light base, but I need a little bit of heft just to hold on to, you know, everything that happens tonally is here here, here, and, and in between these points of contact. Everything else is just for show and, and tell, but um, what I care about is what happens, how it sounds when I'm playing it, but how you play it is the other important thing. If it plays good, if it feels good. Uh, and so far, yeah, it plays pretty great. I didn't do anything to the setup. I, I don't even know. These might be the stock strings. I'm not sure what's on there. I think they're gold ball ends, so they could be SIT, GHS, uh, could be a couple different options, Ernie Ball even. Um, sometimes you can tell from the ball ends, but multicolored ones are usually Daddario. If they're a lighter color, they're Fender, uh, like Seafoam colors, pastels. Uh, speaking of Fender, this has a jazz bass nut width, one in five, one one point five inches, which I've always enjoyed. I like not having to reach for the sky for my notes. I like getting them. So, but it's a little adjustment. My last bass was one in my last bass was 42 millimeters, which is uh 1.6 something nut width. So, I think a P bass or a little less than a P bass nut width. I think uh, my Sarek that I used to have was one in five eighths nut width. That was pretty nice. I like that one kind of an in between it, a tweener nut width. I think is what Jake called it. Jake Sarek who uh, made that thing. So, but this is nice one and a half. I, I always like jazz basses because they're easier to, to hold. So what I don't like is that it fans out more. It's a 20 millimeter bridge spacing. That's kind of insane. Um, I'd prefer at no more than 19. Uh, I usually like a 17 and a half, 18 is really cool. I like a narrower width. I'm not slapping pop land, man. So I prefer just getting around, you know. I don't want to, again, I don't want to reach for the sky. I want everything right here. 
I want to grab it and go. I don't want to think about it. So, but that's me. And this is my video. So, hey, take it as you will. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else can I blab about? Uh, beautiful looking top. I don't know if it's a photo or if it's a real. Uh, it's probably not real, but it's probably a photo flame maple top type of thing. Looks nice. Nice grain to it. Just makes it look pretty. And uh, volume, volume, tone, kind of a classic thing. I'd prefer a volume blend tone. I think independent volumes is just complicating a good thing. Just have a blend, and then you can kind of go where you need it to. But there's a lot of arguments on that I won't even begin to discuss. Uh, neck feels very good, too, overall. Um, the edges are pretty rolled, which I understand is a thing Sire does. And, hey, rolled edges are pretty nifty. That that does take a lot of extra time. To, uh, considerably, you know, a monetarily extra amount of time does that make sense it you spend money to do that in a factory so they spend extra money to roll the edges which is cool the, though at the same time there's a little fret sprout happening on either end it's not that bad it really isn't um but it's there thought i'd mention it and this is a used you know this is a used base so i don't know how old it is could be because it's uh you know acquired here where i am in ohio which uh, you know you don't like the weather you wait five minutes so yeah, that's about it. I don't think there's anything else. Side mount jack, uh, you know, I hate barrel jacks. I wish barrel jacks would just go away, but, you know, that's what's on this thing, so you live with it. The vintage saddles is stupid. I hate vintage saddles. Give me give me a groove. I, I hate vintage saddles. They're stupid. But, I mean, if you got a guitar, they make a little more sense, I guess. But, uh, I don't know. Nah, stupid. Uh, neck heel access for the truss rod which is good. I don't have to take a truss rod cover off. I like that, though. Um, and they give a good amount of space to get a wrench in there, too, which I, I appreciate that. Though what, en what ends up happening is that cavity gets marred by, you know, adjustments, especially here in Ohio. I have to adjust things relatively frequently. I don't care how well it's made. And it just ends up, ends up getting marred in here. It looks kind of tacky. But that's why Yamaha usually has, like, a plastic cup around there so you can kind of, like, absorb the impact, I guess. And that's that's about it, I think. Uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm going to actually hear how it sounds right now for the first time. So I, I did dial in a little bit, just like rough, just levels mainly. So uh, let's see. Is everything up 100%? I'm going through my uh, SSL-6, my uh, pedal board, which only right now has the base, Empress Bass Compressor and the Origin Bass Rig. So this is my amp setup, essentially. If you want to hear it dry, I guess. This is just direct into the mixer now with the, you know, DI out of the origin. Let me turn my background track off now since I'm done blabbing. Pretty bright. It's a weird J thing. It's a PJ. Um, but the bridge pickup, I've noticed this when looking at it, it's pretty close to the bridge, and so I'm a little, I don't know, a little concerned about how that's going to affect my preferred bridge tone. I don't like the nasal bridge thing. I, I want a bridge pickup. I need a bridge pickup. But it's got to be, you know, just accessible. Let's do the P bass now. Still no pedals on now. sure i'm in tune might be a little intonation out again vintage saddles vintage saddles now eh, the eh, the d pickup or the d string might have been a little out let's see here yeah strings might not be stretched all right let's try no, intonation's a little out just one i think it's just the d string Thanks, Bumble Hoof. Appreciate it. How you doing? The E and G are together. No, no, maybe, no, maybe it was me. Give it me. Let me get that bridge pickup in. Okay. 
let me turn my pedals back on. Oh, let's get the bridge pickup solo just direct to the mixer. <laughs> It doesn't have as much meat as I wish, but I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll dial in with the bass rig. It reminds me of like old '80s basses that have like a bridge pickup just really close to the close to the bridge. It's, it's very very thin. It's not bad, but it's just not my preferred thing. All right, let's uh, let's get the compressor compressor and amp back on. So it's basically like running through an SVT. That's a lot better. Nice. That's actually pretty nice. Uh, P pickup. too deep for me but eh, no that's pretty that's pretty solid throw a little a little tone back Let's do the, uh, let's do just the bridge solo now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little, by, by itself, I'm mm, not digging it so far. Noiseless, noiseless. Uh, so it must be a stacked single coil on the bridge. That's nice. That is that is good to have. Hate noisy PJs. Looks like if a Mustang and a P bass had a bass baby. So it is it is a short scale. So kind of that Mustang thing. But instead of a Mustang pickup, it'd be more close. I guess it'd be closer to the like the Mexican made Fender uh, PJ Mustangs that are out there. But I think the pickups are closer together. I think they're further apart on the fender. I'm not sure. Yeah, I haven't done this one in a while. It's also that extra wide spacing. Maybe another bridge pickup song. Thank you. 
looks fine. Not a not my bridge pickup preference, but you know, it does the job. And then when you roll the uh, the vol the P pickup back, and then you just get the jazz bass type of thing. <laughs> So if I wanted to slap, which I, you know, known to do on rare occasions such as this, it it does the job. Let me turn the volume down a little bit. since I did that Thundercat tune. Slap it sounds really nice. Slap's very good. That's uh, and that's kind of to be expected, I guess. I don't think every Marcus Miller is meant to slap, but uh, I don't know all the line. I don't know the whole lineup yet, but uh, I mean it makes sense. It's Marcus Miller, right? <laughs> that's a, that was a Marcus Miller line too. That was a uh, Habba Glaba tribin. Uh, good old Bernie, uh, Bernie Wright, uh, Ber right, Bernie Wright. I'm not Bernie Worrell. Bernie Wright. Yeah, I'm blanking. Habba Glaba tribin. I can remember that. I can't remember which Bernie. <laughs> uh yeah i mean final thoughts i think for this uh i mean it's definitely totally capable and i i should i guess i i, I i'm a i'm an overly uh maybe overly i don't know i don't think i'm overly but i'm definitely a gear pessimist i think there's too much gear out there i think there's just too many people trying to cash in on music while it's an industry and it shouldn't be as large of an industry as it is by which i mean there's just too much gear to buy new there's plenty to buy used there should be a there's there's an insane overwhelming abundance of old gear to get that's still fine as much as i harp on vintage not being worth it there's a lot of 80s and 90s gear that's fantastic for the money that gets swept under the rug all the time however what i like to see in new modern instruments is a company taking advantage of the new resources that they have to make something new and interesting. And this is that, overall, I want to say. Because at the $500 new price range, most of the short-scale options suck. I don't know if you want to hear this, but most of the short-scale options new around 500 bucks are not really good. I personally don't like Mustang basses. I said it. I said it. <laughs> I don't like Mustang basses. They they balance worse, way worse than this does. They sound good, but there's so much of a struggle to play, in my opinion, as someone who finds himself playing more short scales than long scale basses. So I've always been disappointed with Mustangs, and I've played them all. I've played new and old. I I've, I've I remember playing a vintage '70s Mustang that was supposed to be the cream of the crop. I've preferred playing Gretsch Electromatics, <laughs> which are three hundred dollars and 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 pretty fine overall. The Gretsch Electromatic uh, Junior Jet bases are actually pretty solid, but they're three hundred bucks. This is definitely much more pizzazz than that, and I don't just mean how it looks. I mean the the, the pickups, the the electronics, the, the especially the neck, the roll in the edges and everything. This is way more to do than a Gretsch for not much more money. So. I would probably say this is the best short scale bass in the sub thousand dollar range new. I can't think of a better short scale bass that I have come across offered new. Used, different story. You can buy a used Reverend Sentinel, which I'd prefer over this probably, for like seven, eight hundred bucks. Those are awesome. They're not a PJ though. So if you're looking for a short scale PJ, 
The only other option that comes to mind is the Gretsch Electromatics, which are the Junior Jets, which are fine, but this definitely outclasses it for not much more money. But good luck finding them. These are pretty hard to find. I, I can't believe I found the one I did. And, uh, you know, I, I, I got it for a fair used price. It wasn't like a screaming deal, but it definitely wasn't like someone price gouging with the scarcity these have. So I was very, I'm very thankful. Uh, shout outs to the person I bought it from. I, I doubt they're going to watch this, but if you do, thank you very kindly. You were a great help. And, uh, yeah, um, I hope this uh, served as a uh, little helpful ramble video, maybe, if you're watching this, if I decide to upload it, which I probably will. People seem to like me rambling. Thanks for that. <laughs> so long, folks. Take it easy out there. Be good to each other.